R1, 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 R1. All right, let's have a little chat about the S talk, AKA the best talk in Dark Souls. Gotta spam that R1 button to win. This right here is technically not an S talk, it's just the closest thing I have. It's an Oakshot Type 18B. This one happens to be the SL1009 by Lockwood, link in the video description down below. And uh, this type was very common between 14 and 1500, so late Middle Ages, early Renaissance. S talk uh, was most common in the 16th century, but also used before and after. So it's a little bit later, but also parallel to the Type 18B. And there are some differences. Like for one, the S talk tends to be even slimmer than this, as this the blade here starts out you know, sort of wide and then it tapers to this very fine point, whereas an S-Talk would be pretty slender all throughout and would be a much thicker blade and it doesn't have a cutting edge. Uh, this one technically has an edge, even though it's not very good at cutting either. This is really a dedicated thrusting longsword. So uh, it makes it similar enough for demonstration purposes. I suppose S-Talk is a French word meaning thrusting and it's sometimes also referred to by the English term talk even though there seems to be some confusion about the terms and types. Um, for example, Mike Lodes in his book Swords and Swordsmen, which I would highly recommend, by the way, I'll link that as well. It's, a, it's an excellent book. But uh, he says here that although related etymologically, the s talk is quite different from the tuck style rapier. Now, this is a little confusing here because elsewhere in the book he uses the terms tuck and s talk interchangeably, and he doesn't actually, in this paragraph here go on to explain why it's different or in what ways it's different. So I'm assuming that he probably here means an actual rapier with a tuck style blade. I'm guessing you might be referring to something like this Polish s talk here, which kind of looks like a proto rapier, but not sure, I'm not claiming to be an expert on terminology. So. While editing, I dug around a little more and apparently there are actual rapiers with s talk or tuck style blades like this one here. So rapiers are generally one-handed swords and S-talks mostly are two-handed even though there were ones with shorter grips as well that would be used with one hand. A rapier uh, still has a cutting edge as opposed to an S-talk and it, it can be used for cutting. It's not as effective as some other uh, types of sword but it can still cut. And uh, the main difference here is that the rapier is a civilian weapon for dueling and self-defense, whereas the S-Talk is, or was, a military weapon used on the battlefield. So what's the difference here? Well, for self-defense use, you don't have to deal with armor. And uh, this is one of those common misconceptions. People sometimes think that the rapier is an anti-armor weapon, that it's, it was used to pierce plate armor, which is nonsense. It was never designed for that and it, it really can't do that. I mean, nothing really, no blade can penetrate well-made plate armor directly. But the reason why slender blades like this and acutely pointed long swords like this became common in the 15th century is because of the advances in armor. The plate armor of that time was impossible to cut through and it was much more complete coverage than in previous centuries. So they had to come up with something else and this was in fact used to thrust into the gaps of the armor. That is in fact how you deal with plate armor, either with concussive force, so you'd use a, a war hammer or a mace, or even a sword, there's the so-called murder stroke, which I've talked about in other videos where we would actually grab the blade and strike either with the pommel or guard, you know, most commonly against the helmet, or also other parts of the armor to dent it and uh, just cause concussive shock through the armor. Or they would use the point to thrust into the gap. So it can either be used with two hands on the grip like this or for more control, with a technique called half sorting, which again I've also talked about. And so you would use this for more control and more accuracy so you can actually find those gaps in the armor like under the armpits, for example, groin area, uh, in the, the joints, the inside of the arms, things like that. And then you, you could drive this through the mail that often covers these openings and, and this would 
you know, split the rings open, break them open and uh, penetrate that way. So essentially the S-Talk is an even more dedicated anti-armor sword compared to a long sword like this. It is really just for thrusting. Uh, there is some gray area, of course, you know, there, if you have a particularly slender longsword blade compared to a somewhat wider S-Talk blade, they can look pretty similar, at least at first glance. But uh, the, the main feature of the S-Talk is the cross section. It usually has a triangular square or diamond cross section. And uh, that is necessary to make such a slim blade that is still robust enough to be used. So the, the pretty thick cross section with a strong central ridge just gives it extra rigidity and makes it more durable. Uh, if you made just a very narrow blade that tapers to a sharp edge and is, is relatively thin, it would be very likely to bend or break in combat. So this was just a way of making it more effective at thrusting. The more rigid a blade is, the better it thrusts. You know, stiff things penetrate better, who would have thought, right? You don't have the width to actually make it taper enough from the thick center to a, a thinner edge and the angle is very steep. And so generally, the steeper the angle, the less effective it is at cutting because there is more resistance as it tries to pass through the, the material, things like that. So the S-Talk just bypassed that entirely and focused on just the thrusting. Now, you can still strike with it, potentially. And uh, an S-Talk, even though it may look very light, it's really not that terribly light. I mean, swords weren't terribly heavy to begin with. That's one of the common misconceptions. But an S-Talk weighs the same as long swords with a wider blade. It tends to be in around the 1.5 kilogram area or you know, a bit over three pounds. And uh, yeah, it's really quite similar. It may look lighter because of just how slender the blade is, but it's that much thicker. So you could very well still strike with it. I mean, getting hit in the head with a steel bar is you know, not a pleasant experience, of course. So it can still be effective to an extent for striking. It's just not going to cut. S-Talks were often used on horseback, but could also be used on foot. And uh, they were somewhat cumbersome to carry around, but as said, it's, it wasn't a civilian sword. It was really for dedicated military use, so it's less of a concern there. There's also a variation of the S-Talk called the boar sword, which was used for hunting, again, often from horseback. And uh, initially the problem was that when you have such a slender blade, the wounding capability against an animal is somewhat limited and uh, they would over penetrate. So something like a boar could just basically run up on the blade and, and still charge at you and then you would require somebody else with a spear to finish it off. So later versions around 1500 would then use a leaf shaped kind of spear like point. Those as far as I know were not used on the battlefield because you know, for obvious reasons, it's a very specialized hunting tool. Personally, while I find this kind of sword quite interesting, I prefer long swords with wider blades that are also capable of cutting. I mean, of course, I practice HEMA in an unarmored context, so that's really not much of an issue. The techniques used for unarmored longsword fighting are a lot different from those against armor, as it's simply a different focus but uh, it makes perfect sense for the intended use, of course. It is a highly efficient sword against this kind of armor. They are quite pretty too, in my opinion. The uh, slender blade definitely has certain appeal to it. And I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. So I hope you found it interesting. So said, there will be a bunch of relevant links in the video description down below. Go check that out. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and remember, Stay calm and keep thrusting.